Hi, it's me, Eternal, and welcome to the complete Warmonger Guide. Following months of speculation and teasers, here we have the new hero, and she's quite something. With the release of the Warmonger, it seems we have a character that can easily go on the offensive, which goes well with the core combat update that has been released alongside her, aiming to make offense across the board more rewarding. In this guide, I'll be covering all there is to the Warmonger and how she can be used effectively. So enjoy the video, and let's do this. I am war. First, I'll be going over the Warmonger's basic chains, which consist of four 2-3 hit combos with some special properties added in. Warmonger's Wrath is the Warmonger's heavy to heavy chain. As you can see, with how the heavy finisher flashes towards the end, it has hyper armor. In fact, all heavy finishers in Warmonger's chains have hyper armor, which will allow you to trade with your opponents with the right timing. Tyrant's Assault is the Warmonger's light to heavy chain. On top of the heavy finisher's hyper armor, all of Warmonger's light attacks are enhanced, which allows you to continue a chain even if these light attacks are blocked. This will become clear as to why Warmonger's enhanced lights are important later in the guide, but for now, know that simply blocking won't be enough to deal with the character. Vanguard's Bane is the Warmonger's light into light into heavy chain, and Warmonger's Bane is the Warmonger's heavy into light into heavy chain. With all of these chains combined, you have the capabilities to keep in the offensive and manage to catch your opponents off guard if they start trying to parry or counter the attacks in your chains such as throwing out a heavy finisher instead of a second light attack if you think your opponent is going to try to parry it. The light attacks in Warmonger's chains are valuable. You'll find out why soon enough. So, it's a good idea to mix these chains up well in order to make your opponent uncertain of what you're going to do next. The Warmonger has three basic attacks. First, we have On the Prowl, the Warmonger's running attack, which is surprisingly deadly with its speed and reach. Generally, running attacks are saved for 4v4s due to how they can be quite predictable, save for the off chance in the duel when it just feels right in the moment. Warmonger's running attack is a viable one, especially since it can flow into her basic chains. This goes for all of her basic attacks. The Warmonger's zone attack, performed by pressing the light and heavy attack buttons at the same time, is quite fast and could be used for a decent option select. An option select, for example, could be using the zone attack when you'd usually parry an opponent's attack, as it would be safer to use instead of your standard heavy attack. Using her zone attack will also allow you to chain into her basic chains, so there's that too. And finally, we have Prey Upon, which is the Warmonger's forward dodge heavy attack. This move serves a purpose in catching opponents who are trying to escape your offense. The move is undodgeable, as you can see with the blue smoke, and can be feinted, allowing you to bait someone into thinking that you were trying to bait them if you were to feint this move into a guard break or something. Prey Upon can also flow into her basic chains. Now, we'll be getting into how the Warmonger can really amp up the pressure with her unblockable attacks. First, we'll go over the Warmonger's Bash, called Praying Claw. This move can be accessed from any light attack in the chain or dodge, and it guarantees a light attack on hit. The move has a variable timing, which means that depending on how long you hold onto the unblockable button, the guard break button, the bash will occur at a different dodge timing. Charging this move for as long as you can will result in a guaranteed heavy attack on hit. On top of this, Praying Claw can also be feinted, allowing you to catch an opponent's dodge with a guard break or just to see how they will react. Beast of Prey is the Warmonger's unblockable side dodge attack. If this move looks familiar to those of you that have played the story mode, that's because it is taken from Apollyon's moveset, but sped up. This attack can flow into the Warmonger's basic chains, evade attacks, and can be feinted. I can see this move becoming quite useful in 4v4s, evading incoming attacks while staying on a decent offensive with this unblockable. The Warmonger's unblockable attacks are easy to access and revolve around a mix-up intensive playstyle, 
aiming to catch your opponent out in attempts to avoid your offense. From a heavy parry, Warmonger can get a guaranteed light attack into her mix-ups. Or a zone attack, which will deal one more damage and also flow into her mix-ups, but will use up more stamina. A zone attack after a heavy parry might also be more desirable when you're being ganked in order to hit any surrounding opponents whilst punishing those you have parried. From a light parry, Warmonger can punish with a guaranteed top heavy attack. After any parry, Warmonger can follow up with Vicious Impale. This is probably my favorite move of hers. This can be done by pressing the guard break button after you parry an attack. The punish deals 8 damage on its own, but it can be used to pin your opponent up against a wall in order to guarantee 20 bleed damage and 2 more direct damage with the Warmonger's claws, which in total equates to a 30 damage punish. This move can also be used to ledge your opponents if they had some rather unfortunate positioning. After parrying an opponent who is out of stamina, you can follow up with this impale in order to guarantee the same 30 damage without the usage of any walls. If you would like to go for a punish that guarantees more direct damage, you can perform a light or zone attack into a top heavy finisher. If you would like to maintain the pressure on your opponent, creating a higher potential to deal even more damage, you can perform a zone attack into a light attack and then into your Prey and Claw mix-up. Guard breaking your opponents will guarantee a side heavy for 29 damage, but throwing your opponent into a wall will always guarantee a top heavy for 32 damage. If you manage to guard break and throw your opponents whilst they are out of stamina, you can perform the same as you would for an out of stamina parry punish, with a light or zone attack into a top heavy. Or, to maintain the pressure, a zone attack into a light attack and then into your Prey and Claw mix-up. Next, I'll be going over the feats that are unique to Warmonger and how they can be used. Before I do so, I'm just going to say that these feats are centered on disrupting team fights and ganks, and dealing a large amount of damage to multiple enemies if they don't work around you. So, this character brings aspects to For Honor that haven't been driven to this extent. Here we go. First, we have Corruption Blade. This feat coats the Warmonger's blade with what is known as Corruption. On hit, your opponent will become corrupted and develop an AoE around them, in which their allies being in that AoE will cause damage over time to your opponent and all of their allies in that area. This AoE also deals damage over time whenever a corrupted opponent is near their minions which will cause damage to the enemy player as well as decimate any surrounding minions on their team. Next, we have Elixir of Corruption, which is a passive ability that heals the Warmonger whenever damage is dealt to a corrupted opponent. Then, there's Power of Corruption, which is another passive ability that allows the Warmonger to deal more damage to a corrupted opponent. And finally, we have Corruption Blast. This is an AoE that distributes corruption to all enemy players nearby. As all the surrounding players on the enemy team will be corrupted, the damage it deals overlaps so that two corrupted players in the same vicinity will receive double the damage. Three players will receive triple the damage and four will receive quadruple the damage. In terms of perks for the character, the Warmonger has a mixture between offensive and defensive perks. From my idea of the character, I would recommend aiming for a combination of Aegis or Devourer, Endurance and Fresh Focus in order to spend less time out of stamina and really push the Warmonger's offensive and mix-up intensive playstyle in 4v4s. The Warmonger is a hero that can maintain pressure on her opponents with easily accessible unblockables and a drive to prolong war. In 1v1s, you can expect to use these unblockables to force a reaction from your opponents if they are playing defensively with Beast of Prey and the dodge variation of Prey and Claw being used to initiate an opponent or avoid attacks while staying on the offensive. As stated before, the light attacks in Warmonger's chains are valuable in their ability to flow into the Prey and Claw mix-up, hence why they are enhanced. However, if you'd like the best experience with Warmonger, be careful with those lights by performing an opener light whilst moving backwards, which will whiff the attack, and then going into your Prey and Claw mix-up. With no counter-attacks in her moveset, the Warmonger thrives in being the driving force of the fight, aiming to maintain an offensive playstyle. 
in 4v4s, things are gonna get kinda crazy. The Warmonger's feats allow her to disrupt organized ganks and isolate enemy players away from each other, and in turn, objectives in the game mode. Not only can the Warmonger deal a large amount of AoE damage, she can sustain herself from this damage as she heals from it, allowing her to take large control of team fights and determine whether an objective falls to the enemy team or not. And there we go. That was the complete guide to the Warmonger. If you still have any questions, I'll answer them in the following Warmonger videos, as I'd like to make more videos on her. She does have a very nice fashion sense. So stick around if you'd like to see more with a number of other characters in Fauna. However, I don't know what lies in store for her in the future, because, as you can imagine, getting four Warmongers on the enemy team would not be the best experience. Who knows? Regardless, I hope you enjoyed the video and took something away from it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.